Uh, hello, uh, I'd like to talk about discrete event simulators today, specifically the Verilog discrete event simulator. It is much like your other discrete event simulators out there like DES and all the other fun things. Um, but it, it's got some funny things it does that, that are particular to the language. And it also is designed for performance, not necessarily mathematical accuracy. Uh, so the idea is we have several components that uh, in Verilog that start out at time zero. These are called processes. These processes are, are, are noted with the keywords initial. Okay, they start at time zero, and what happens is we have a queue. A queue is just a list of things we have to do, modeling tasks we have to take care of. And so the idea here is that at time zero, we have this initial block and its job is to go ahead and create us a clock but you notice the clock doesn't actually start right away it starts five now seconds later so we put whatever the heck this evaluation is we don't know we just know we need to do something at time zero here and we put it on the queue we go down we say is anybody else starting at time zero um, yes line 10 line 11 line 12 and line 13 so we add those to our queue now let's see if this has any impact let's see what this looks like well, if we look at line seven and we, we start evaluating, so the idea is we pop things off the queue or dequeue them. Don't want to get your software terms confused here. And we dequeue an element and we say, what do we, what do, we do with that element? What, what is the task being asked of us? Uh, we're being asked to go ahead and schedule a blocking assignment. So I say blocking schedule for five nanoseconds or five picoseconds, whatever your time scale is. For five nanoseconds later and you'll see I what I do is I now create another queue a queue for five nanoseconds and we're gonna keep doing this we're gonna keep creating queues as we schedule stuff further out into the future and so a queue will represent whatever we have to do at a particular time slice be that zero nanoseconds five nanoseconds ten nanoseconds and so what we're doing here is we're saying create a new queue and put line seven on there get rid of because all we're doing at time zero in the queue is waiting for five nanoseconds. So, done. We don't actually evaluate this operation until five nanoseconds later. So, with that said, we're still in time zero. We need to go to the next uh, element in the queue. That's at line 10. Now, this is a non-blocking capture. Now, the interesting thing about this is we capture the right-hand side first, and then only after all the active events are complete do we come back and then assign them. So you'll see line 10, we get a non-blocking capture. Line 11, we get a non-blocking capture. Line 12, we have a non-blocking capture. 13 is a non-blocking schedule, so you see, but it's for five nanoseconds later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put line 13 onto the queue T plus five nanoseconds. So now we have seven and 13 to solve after we're done with everything. Now the thing is, is there stuff left to do? Absolutely. Remember we have to go back and reassign all of our right hand side values to our left hand components for those that were non-blocking assigned statements. And so the Verilog discrete event simulator says while there are events, we agree there are events, um, if there are non-blocking assign update events, that's that non-blocking capture 10, 11, and 12, activate them. So I'm going to activate them, which means they go back onto the queue, and I'm going to label them yellow, just so it's clear. Now we have a toggle. The toggle gets assigned a value of 0, because we captured a value of 0. So you see here, it goes to 0. Now line 11 and evaluates. That means reset goes to 0. Now what was reset previously? Reset was actually X. And so what's happening here is we're going from X to zero. Does that matter? Absolutely. What happens is we are sensitive to signals changing, right? We have these processes. These processes interrupt whenever a value changes. Uh, and here we're only sensitive to when the signal reset underscore B goes from X to zero uh, Z to zero and one to zero. Is any of that happening here? Yes, actually. Reset is going from X to zero because by default, anything of data type reg has a default value of X and any change to zero would be a falling or a negative edge change. 
Similarly, a positive edge change would be x to 1, z to 1, 0 to 1. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're now going to add something to our q. Uh, and so what's going to happen is 28 gets added. Now let's continue on. We go and we evaluate line 12. Well, this goes from x to 1. That is, that, that's very similar to what we did before, right? We have 28. We, I'm sorry, we have, uh, we have our clock going from x to 1. And what's happening here is that we're looking for the positive edge. Well, x to 1 would be considered a positive edge transition. And so why did I throw line 28 on there? Well, let's look at this. What really would have been executed if we go all the way down? I'm sort of shortcutting. Um, but what, what's happening here is, are we in reset? Is reset 0? Yes. The clock, so what's going to happen is, we immediately terminate right here, and we only execute line 28 in either case. Now you should ask yourself, well, I have two 28s on my queue. Do I really have to execute them back to back? Not necessarily. Uh, realistically, your simulator would err on the side of speed and say, you know what, that's a redundant check, a redundant assignment, so I'm going to get rid of it. And so therefore, we're only going to do one. Okay, so what's left? Do we have anything left to do? Um, well, is anybody sensitive to sig out changing? No. So we uh, have basically done the non-blocking capture. Now we're doing the non-blocking assign of sig out. And we're done. There's nothing left to do, right? So what happens is we now advance the t, the time, the current simulator time, to the next event time. And that'll be at 5 nanoseconds. And we activate all inactive events. And that's not necessarily these inactive events, by the way. That's sort of confusing. But the idea is we go, in, we go and we activate anything that was put on our queue and we start processing it. So the first thing we'll process is line 7 and then we'll go to line 13. It's out of order, sorry. Um, but yep. So see if this uh, you, can, you can continue the rest of the simulation on your own. Uh, I think I bet you can, and I bet you'll you'll come to a lot of you'll come to a really good understanding of how Verilog simulates uh, and why we use make use of a discrete event simulator. Thanks for your time.